episode of the Red Bull Rant is brought to you by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, William Martin, Clayton John, and Christopher Admack. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing conversation amongst three lifelong wackos that may contain adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, my friends, to the show that never ends. This is the Red Bull Rant Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Ipico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman, and this is episode 310. And I'm genuinely sorry about the window! <laughs> Gotta love that movie. Yeah. Have so you I have seen to... it, Jay? Oh, yes, I've seen it. Eh, I don't know. I feel like at the beginning of this, you did not understand. No, come on. I do. I, I've seen that movie multiple times. I think when it came out, I put it on my iPod video. That's how, and I sort of was watching it that at work because why not? Okay, what happened in the Footloose scene? <laughs> you mean when he goes tumbling down the hill? All right, all right, all right. I now believe you. One one of the best parts of the movie is um, listening to Isla Fisher's uh, accent show up in in several parts. <laughs> She just just spaces out, and there's like she's Welsh, I think. Yeah, and you could just hear the accent like explode. She was born in Oman. Hmm. Oman. Mm-hmm. You know who was saying that was Kamara Lawrence after his fine from MLS. Oman. Yeah, he's saying, oh man. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got two games to talk about this week. First, uh, Red Bulls home to Atlanta United. Tim Parker pick up a uh, red card in thirty fifth minute, but it doesn't matter because the Red Bulls win one nothing. Down a man, still managed to do it. Then they turn around and host the Vancouver Whitecaps with a heavy squad rotation, given that it's three matches in seven days, and they draw with the Whitecaps two to two. A Whitecaps team that did not get into two a.m. and was not a full A squad. That also. Uh, Truman, do you have the tweets ready to read out? Sure. Well, it's really easy because um, everyone was so happy, apparently, about the first game that there were no tweets. <laughs> so, should we just get into rage tweets? Because there's, there's rage some rage tweets. tweets. Okay, so here we go. This is, of course, all about last night's game. Uh, Tonino M says, our defense was picked apart. Thank God for Roboys. No kidding. Uh, first half possession was probably 80-20. Second half was probably 35-65. Our friend Anthony says, this consistency is frustrating when Red Bulls defeat top teams like the Galaxy and Atlanta United, but lose to shit teams like Orlando, the Revs, and Chicago. Yep. Uh, Two two of those on the road. Still frustrating, though. I I agree. David Broad at David Broad 9 says, Robles saved us so many times from Nealis and Duncan's mistakes. Marking from them in defense from them today was, was no bueno. The offense did well today in the first half, questionable in the second half, but the second half wasn't as good. It's sad that one point at home is good now. Uh, at CNY Metro 96 says, Woof, I'll take the point, but I really don't know how Duncan got a US U23 call up. He was awful. Nealis as well. He was literally a human traffic count out there. Thank God Parker's coming back for Cincinnati. Hurry up, Aaron Long. Uh, Chris Smith at Smith Give Gab chimed in, completely agree on Duncan. He has been terrible every game going back to CCL. What do others see that I am missing? Um, he's had some good games, guys. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, he needs to stay down at RB2 and get his shit together. Mm. Uh, ETK at, sec- at SEC201. So I guess we know where he's sitting, Pat. Hey. Uh, he says, I just feel badly that Neil's family and had <laughs> that Neil's family and had to deal with two river crossings at rush hour to watch that. I mean, come on. We're gonna we're gonna pummel the guys. Don't we're gonna don't worry. Uh, and then at Adam is a it's Ash, Maria, and Lawrence on the bench. Fans okay with the draw to Vancouver delete this season. 
uh, and then added there was Optimus Anonymous at High on Cap said, we aren't as terrible as people make us out to be. We've done well against the top of the table. So I disagree with that guy. I disagree with him, but I don't want to shit it on any optimists because they deserve to be happy. All right. And, you, and <clears throat> is there something else? No, that's it. Okay. I wasn't sure. Um, so but, let's get into this with our likes and dislikes. Well, I just real quick to, cause you know, just blanket statement against tweets. I'm with you on Sherman. Uh, I'm with you Truman about Duncan. He's not as awful as everyone who makes him out to be. He's actually, I mean, uh, just think about the play that he admittedly blew in the end by taking that shot. I mean, he should have passed it, but everything he did up to that mm-hmm. point was highly skillful. It really was. The slide tack yeah. and everything. He is not as bad as uh, people want to make him out to be. And if you're going to make the U.S. U23 team, mm-hmm. you, there's, you have to have some level of yeah. skill there. He, he needs fine-tuning. I will not deny that, but kid's got skill. Are you going to say something, Truman, or are you good? No, let's dig. Let's and dig. Diggity dig dig. Okay, apparently Truman's on delay, because <laughs> Pat and I definitely looked at it like something yeah. was going on. Cool. Well, that seems normal. I'm excited about being on delay. All right. So, first... It's going to be our dislikes, and I am starting it off because I actually did preparation for this one. Yeah, you did. I have a spreadsheet and everything. Uh, so, before the Vancouver game, during one of the, the media scrums, uh, Chris Armist was asked about the play this year, and he decided to take the time to go off on the media for being too negative. <laughs> and by uh, media, he means the podcasts. <laughs> really, Yeah. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to let him say it in his own words. Well, I think it starts before that. You know, I think people, <clears throat> it's amazing for me, honestly. I, I mean, we don't talk too much about the past, but we won the Supporter Shield last year. No one really expected that. I mean, who does? No one talked about it really. Again, I, and I'm revisiting this because when we start the year and, and, and things don't go our way early on, it's who are the Red Bulls? What's wrong? Weird weeks. It's just negative about the New York Red Bulls. And on the inside, we've kept strong. But I think, honestly, even some of the tougher performances and a couple of, you know, even Kansas City, it, our locker room was together. And on that day, we thought we took a big step forward. So this foundation that we've talked about of being strong to sustain through tough times, it has started years ago. It starts um, in a playoff run last year it, in, in tough moments when we get injuries, in tough moments when there's lots going on. Um, but it just seems, to be honest with you, that people don't talk about the good things that the New York Red Bulls do um, and only attack in, in tougher times. We skip over the Columbus series and the playoffs last year. We go right to the game we fall apart in Atlanta. It's just negative. So <laughs> when I see our, a team every day stick together out here and then stick together and, and ship away and, and, and see the belief grow, I, I see the other day as a result. That wasn't a starting point. That was a result of a of a real team staying strong. I'm okay, calling wait, bullshit. I, wait, hold on. Before you go crazy, I just want to mention that at the private practice, he said that he doesn't really uh, have time to listen to anything or read anything from the, from the media. So he's a liar. So, but go ahead and continue. I think he might have just been referencing his own job safety when he was talking to us at the private practice. But I just want to throw it out there. Okay, so you want to talk about what was good. That was last year. You know why negative coverage is happening? It's because the team is middling this year. We were the best team in MLS regular season last year. We were one bad coached game away from MLS Cup. So, yeah, expectations are high this year. Atlanta, second year in the league, won MLS Cup. And if you ask the league, what gets you stars on the jersey, the cup or the shield? Open cup fans, <laughs> sure. Fans, this team have been waiting for years. Uh, Truman can attest because he's been here the longest of the three of us. But years, this team has been waiting for uh, MLS Cup victory. And you know what? He wants to talk about positives. Okay, we're gonna go do a little comparison here. So I'm looking at MLS regular season games only at this point because 
I think we played more CCL games last year, and I don't want to get into having to adjust for all that stuff. We did, yeah. Last year, Red Bulls went 22-5-7. and seven. They won 64% of the games, lost 20. This year so far, they are 5-3-5. Five, and five. They have lost and won 38.5% of their games. They are two losses away from matching their total for last year. And we're not even halfway through the season yet. At home, the Red Bulls went 14-1-2. and two. They only lost at home 12% of the time. This year, they are 4-1-3. and three. They've lost at home 37.5%. You could have just said three times. I think I we. <laughs> yeah. Well, percentage. I'm, I'm using percentages because sample size and all that crap. Goals for, uh, goals per game last year. Red Bull scored 1.82. This year we're down to 1.46. Goals against, best defense in the league. 0.94 goals against per game last year. 1.23 so far this year. Mm-hmm. And this is the part. This is the part that pisses me off the most. Red Bulls last year scored first 25 times in 34 MLS regular season games. We have so far done it 6 out of 13. But out of those 6 this year, 5 of those we've given up the lead at some point. Last year, 8 out of 25. Not even a half of those games last year did we give up the lead. And so far this year when we have given up the lead... We've won two, draw two, and lost one. Last year, we were four, two, and two when we gave up the lead. We are were arguably a better team last year from, and I didn't even go into more in detail de- stats, obviously, but we are obviously a worse team than we were last year. Doy. Yeah. How, how can Chris Armis complain about negative coverage? There's negative coverage because the team is fucking worse. Yeah. You want better coverage? Produce results. Results are all that matter in the end. Yeah. No, no. I mean, like yesterday, when as soon as uh, Vancouver went up one nothing, I got up in my seat and I started screaming at the field, like about specifically about this. I was like, like this is why we doubt you. This is why we doubt you because you beat Atlanta one week. And then against the ninth team in the West, you're down one nothing. This is why, as a fan base, we doubt you. This is why we're negative. And I think that's hilarious that he brought up, like, oh, well, we were good against Columbus. Yeah, but when the when it mattered, you shit the bet against Atlanta last year. You also went down 2 nothing to Columbus. Yeah, and it's just like, it, it's... Or like, one up, on. whatever it was, but... It's like, come on, man. Uh, Yeah, we're going to get annoyed. I mean, the bookmakers had the Red Bulls as the MLS favorite at the beginning of the year. You know? So there's expectations. And when you don't meet them, you're going to get negative coverage. When your star, you know, number 10, kicks a ball in a fan's face, you're going to get negative coverage. All right? Deal with it. If you can't handle it, don't be a coach. You know? now. And the one thing I'll give Chris Armis is obviously what I've been harping on every single fucking week that they did not uh, they did nothing to improve this roster. Uh, they sold their best player, and their star striker got a year, old, year older. So uh, that, that, that's the one thing I'll give him. But it's just, come on, man. Deal with it. All right. Are we, are we gonna, are we, yeah, we're going to talk about the actual dislikes of games. I mean, well, did, did well, you, this time, that, that was my dislike. So if you want to chime in on it, feel free. I mean, but I mean, what what am I going to say? You guys didn't already say the results aren't as good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the biggest issue is home losses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can kind of look at a, a shitty road loss and go, eh, it's a shitty road loss to shitty teams. But yeah, I mean, I think the toughest thing is um, losing at home and then a game last night uh, that you could have won um, and you only got a draw out of it. I'm not jumping off the bridge after last night because I guess I can get into that a little later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is frustrating that you, that you are winning and stupid fucking penalties awarded and you can't get a third goal, even though you kind of had a third goal, but you, they didn't review it, whatever. Okay. Let's get into that later. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that one too. Uh, all right. So let me get into my dislikes. So we're just doing, we're just doing a combination thing here. Yep. 
Uh, I guess I'm just going to say giving up counterattack goals. I guess that's, that's the one, right? Just, just counterattack goals really sucks. Um, especially last night, that first goal that Vancouver scored, uh, clearly when they just dominated the entire game. Uh, last night they were very, very fortunate. Um, my God, I don't even know. I can emphasize how fortunate they were to not give up another one, give up, uh, but could have been like a, a goal that resulted in a loss right at the very end. Not been for Louis Suarez. The thing is, the hundred defense was definitely not one hundred percent. Was it even fifty percent? I don't even know if that defense was up to fifty percent. It it really sucks and it really hurts. Um, and it definitely cost us the last night. That defense was at zero percent, unless you count counter late as a regular starter. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, right? No, I, I, I think uh, uh, Tarek's going to be. He's, a, he's the guy now. He's, the, he's the man. Yeah. No, Tarek has certainly proved to be a good, uh, good signing so far. Uh, my dislike is uh, I thought Armis un- unnecessarily arrested players last night. I think he could have had. I mean, Kamar Lawrence could have played again. Um, you know, it's, you know, as much as I'll defend Cal Duncan to a point and kind of lay to a point, um, you know, I feel like when you're that shorthanded on defense, you don't take healthy starters out. I know it's three games in a short period of time, but you, you got to you gotta deal. You put Cal Duncan in on Saturday when, or kind of late for that matter, when uh, uh, Tim Parker's healthy, you know. Don't take out Kamar Lawrence. Keep your defense as strong as possible. Had you done that, maybe one of those goals doesn't happen, uh, and you get the win. You mean I, Parker back from red card suspension? Yes, yes. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, <laughs> Pat flips me off. Uh, I think the reason the, the team has played like that is because you're playing at home on Wednesday night. Uh, you expect to get a result. I mean, I you know, quote, unquote, you expect to get a result, right? Um, so you feel like a B team's more necessary. Also, Sunday, Saturday, those are Eastern Conference games. They're clearly more important than a game midweek against the Western Conference. Uh, that's when you, I think you need your A team to be at 100%. And I think that's uh, Armis' reasoning as to why you saw the lineup like that. Yeah, I disagree. I think you, you don't, as bad as you've been at home this year, you, you don't sacrifice another game at home. You know? and, and it's harder to beat Vancouver despite all their wo- travel woes, than it is to beat FC Cincinnati. Mm. On the road? Well, I know, the, I know, it's, I know they suck. They, but they're not great at home right now either. But I, I know, but I'm saying I think the, lo- the logic is there is the two Eastern Conference games where the points are definitely are they're significantly more important than midweek against Vancouver. Well, we'll talk about it and get to prediction, but if they don't fucking blow them out now, do you have a valid reason for Armas getting more mag- negative coverage? I'm 100%. And let's not forget that in about two weeks, there's an international break. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, I mean, granted, a couple of our players will be playing during that time, but... It's like five of them, right? Uh, yeah. Well, Maria, well we, get, we got three games. We'll get to that later. Yeah. But, you know, um, it, it's, you know, there's a rest coming up, you know? Um, it's I feel like he's playing like FIFA... Or it's like, oh, he's tired this week. Let me put all my scrubs because I can. I'm a master, and I can still win with my scrubs. I'm like, no, you can't. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Out of the four head coaches I've seen so far, you're the worst. <laughs> he didn't have. He didn't have you on it. I've seen four. <laughs> if I come back one more year, they'll be worse. Oh yeah, much, much, much worse. <laughs> Much worse. If my fandom had started one year earlier. Oh yeah, somebody be. You'd be laughing this off right now. It's you know, could be a lot worse. All right, we yeah. getting the dislikes. Are we done getting angry for now at this yep. little moment juncture? Yeah, because I got more in the afterlikes or after. Okay, thoughts. in the afterlikes. <laughs> yeah, after All right. sure. I'm throwing out my like, and that is uh, the the youth of today. Uh, Barlow, who is a manly man, he's eight feet tall and he drinks motor oil. Uh, what a fucking great goal he had against Atlanta. Uh, that man pounds his chest and then Kaku rode him like a goddamn horse. Uh, I appreciate that. And then, of course, uh, Brian White, three goals on the year, leads the team in goal scoring, I believe. <laughs> 
Uh, but listen, he, he has filled in admirably. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, when you get, and I'll say this, listen, when you put the forwards in a position to score and you get them the ball, they will score goals. Mm-hmm. And this is, listen, I know we're mad that Bradley's older and he's out, but the getting the ball in and scoring on it. Um, maybe whenever Bradley comes back, we can also get him the ball in certain situations so he can actually put it in the back of the net. But just, yeah, props props to the kids because mm-hmm. they are playing fantastic right now. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Ray well, Phillips is not going back and making the same. But uh, <laughs> that I, I'm going to double down on that. Uh, yes, uh, like for Brian Wright, um, the brace yesterday was very nice. Is it still a brace? That, that second one was never – It was it, it was changed to an own goal. Okay. Either way, I mean, he – he put the ball in a dangerous spot. Sometimes that's what you got to do, and that's what mm-hmm. happens. You know, uh, I think sometimes guys can get a little too timid and um, miss opportunities like that. So, um, you know, Brian White, kudos to him. He's uh, certainly having. Uh, you know, I don't think he puts the fear of God in anybody, but he is. Uh, he's doing his job. You know, he's doing his job to a decent, um, decent level. So, um, got to give him uh, credit for that. So, kudos, Brian White. Uh, my like is going to be that we went down a man against Atlanta. Uh, switched the tactics at that point to bunker because it was absolutely necessary and did what we had to do to secure a victory. Because mm-hmm. it's very hard winning 10 men, especially against a good team like Atlanta. Yeah. So, hey, there's just something positive, Armis. You did, you did a good job when you're down to mm-hmm. 10 men. Listen, if if this right. if we were only reviewing uh, one game, I think that this like would have been that shady call on uh, Tim Parker. Yeah, it was, it was soft. It was super soft. Oh, I could see a yellow. We're but... going to talk about that. Okay, so afterthoughts, <laughs> referee decisions in the Atlanta game. Oh, oh, well, how about we just talk about how about we just talk about <laughs> officiating? Yeah, officiating in both games, yeah. Okay, so I totally disagree with the red because I do not believe it was a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity because mm-hmm. he took a fucking shot that Robles had to save. It was a shot on target. So how do you deny a goal scoring opportunity when it happens when you allow the play to continue? Right. It's a yellow card. He does it. It's a yellow card in a corner. That's what it should have been. By giving the free kick, you gave them a second chance at the goal from from that from that spot, right? Because the best part is, like, I watched the replay because I want to see what they thought, and I forget who it was. Maybe Bobby Warshaw said it should have been a penalty kick. The foul occurred outside the box. Mm-hmm. There's a reason when he brought it back and gave the red, it wasn't a penalty kick because the foul right. happened outside the box. Where do people think a penalty kick comes from? Like, that's the most random part. And he wasn't the only person that said it, too, which really baffles me. Mm-hmm. But that that was a soft red. Um, and then, Very, very, very. I, I get it by the letter of the law. It's a red. But I don't agree because of the fact that he was able to still get a shot off when the whistle wasn't blown immediately. I mean. And it was a decent shot. Like, if it was a shot off target, then, yeah, okay, I can maybe understand. But. I mean, I'm going to be more ornery on some of the other things, but it's, um, you know, from that standpoint, I don't think it matters about a shot. But, I mean, the fact that it matters, you see tugs like that all the time. Uh, there was still plenty of space for him, you know, uh, to, you know, for the, the shot to be screwed. It was not an obvious goal-scoring op- opportunity, I don't believe. Um, I would definitely say yellow, not red. Um, I, I feel like there have been plenty of times where – more obvious fouls have occurred closer to the goal that have been called yellow. Um, so that that was definitely, uh, you know, a, a very, very soft red car. You know what pissed me off about the card, too, is that when he took it out and, and watched the replay again, he's like, he's like walking like he's going to surprise someone. It's like he's handing someone the rose on The Bachelor. He was like, <laughs> ooh, who's going to get it? Oh, oh, Parker gets it. Oh, there you go. And then the crowd, of course – uh, lost their fucking minds. It sure did. Because no one could understand it. And then, of course, they showed the replay and then forget about it. I mean, it was just on at that point. People just absolutely going ballistic. Yeah. 
And then, of course, we get the... We're going to come back to disciplinary committee stuff because I know that's going to be a little contentious. Last night, the VAR that didn't happen, that probably should have. Mm-hmm. Although I understand why it didn't because we don't have the... They didn't have the angle to really judge it. Fair enough. But it still deserves at least a look, right? I mean... The goal? Yeah, the goal that was... The, the, non, the, the non-goal, the yeah. The non-goal. Like, it still deserves a look, right? I mean, it's close enough where you... I mean, <sighs> the problem is the problem is the clear and obvious error bar that you have to... That's just it, it. I mean... If, if they I, don't... Just, I just want to know why we don't... We, we kind of talked about in our internal chat why we don't have goal line technology at this point, but England does. Yeah. I, I'm kind of surprised they don't have cameras there on the goal line. That that does surprise me. Uh, it seems like a simple, uh, something simple to implement, but. You... Well, what is Premier League? You have the chip the in the ball? They have, they have, yeah, they have the, the chip in the ball or whatever right? it is because the referee has the, like the watch that buzzes when it goes in. Okay. And they can do, and they have that. What is it like? It looks like the tennis replay, right? Where it does the whole, it freeze frame and it zooms over mm-hmm. to show you where the shadow is, kind of thing. Eagle eye, mm-hmm. yeah, eagle eye. I don't think it's called the same thing for soccer, but it's the same kind of technology, right? I, I mean, mean Con- Concacaf doesn't have it because if they did, the U.S. would have been in the last World Cup. But, <laughs> mm. but I mean, MLS is at like the forefront of a lot of this stuff. How is it that we don't have this technology? You yet? got me. You got me. I feel like it, it, at the very least there should be cameras on the the goal line, you know. Absolutely, you could, very, put, a, you could put a small camera in there, uh, in the, right in behind the post. post. No, put them yeah. in the goal post. You've done it before. ESPN does it. Just they yeah. face they face at a slight angle. But yeah. I mean, if ESPN can do it, why can't we do it for everybody? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. I mean, the, I believe I forget which which one of you shared it, but I mean, it clearly looked like it went over the line. But Jay, like you said, yes. Could I conclusively 100% say no? But I'd say like 90%. I'm pretty damn sure it went over. So we can use – the NFL can use technology to judge the tip of a football uh, crossing a goal line. But we mm-hmm. can use a fucking camera to just right. point straight ahead, straight down a line, a yep. camera. to Go right down the line and go, oh, look, here's the line. Yep. Boom. The fucking NHL does it. Yep. Football does it. We can't see that? Mm-hmm. And there can't be a little, just like in England, a little buzzer goes off. I think they have a watch or something, and it buzzes or it makes a little chime or whatever, and it's like, boom, goal. And yep. it takes two seconds. Yep. Because then, oh, look, that's a goal whistle, you know, boom. Mm-hmm. I, and, man, that should have been in it because that was a fucking crazy play by Kaku. Mm-hmm. It was just like, I'm just going to spin around. Maybe this will go to somebody, and it went in the net. Yeah. So I, I just I don't understand why we don't have that. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully shit like this is the impetus for it actually happening. Mm-hmm. Um, the fine to Kamar Lawrence and Tom Barlow. Um, so Barlow, I understand. I'm going to put that out there first, right? Both of them got fined for uh, putting hands to neck and face. Barlow, I get. He came into the middle of a scrum and he was trying to break it up, but you can't at that point wrap your arms around somebody and try to stop him like that. That doesn't, no. I mean, that's just the Lawrence one. I don't agree with only because Lawrence wasn't being aggressive. He was literally reacting to Villalba bumping his chest. Mm -hmm. And if you, and if you watch the video, he throws his hands to protect himself and then immediately throws him away from his body and away from Villalba. Like, one of those, like, the, what you usually see when people are like, I didn't do anything. Like, as soon as he realized what's going on, his hands are out of the area. Like, we can't have a little bit of context to say, hey, yeah, this guy might have done it, but he didn't hurt anybody. It wasn't intentional. He was not trying to be physical. I, I just wish we could have that context. And I say, nope. And look, here's the thing, and I'm going to take the contrarian opinion because fuck you. And uh, (laughs) look, do I agree that it was a soft fine? And to an extent, I wouldn't mind. I would like 
there to be some context in it. Yes. However, uh, right now the league is calling it as is you put hands to the face, boom, that's it. You're hit. You're smacked with it. And I would rather them call it consistently, even if it screws over our guys like it did in this case, than have a, well, well, well. I mean, I, I feel like that that's one of the reasons they have a zero tolerance policy because there have been so many times where they're like, well, I don't know. And then sometimes they overdo it. Sometimes they underdo it. You know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's lose lose. You can have the time, you can have it where it's like, well, we'll look at it, we'll decide. And they'll, sometimes they'll get it wrong, sometimes they'll get it right. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those things. Uh, you know, I, yes, I agree it was a defensive posture. Um, I don't agree with the general that Villalba should have gotten a anything for chest bump. I think chest bumps are part of the game. Um, you know, so it, it's just how, what happens. Um, I, I, I don't think the context analysis is the better option, especially when you consider how often, uh, you know, disciplinary committee or refs get – get shit wrong. You know, it, it, it's just, I'd rather have that zero tolerance blanket. It sucks, but I, I, I it's a lesser two evils in my opinion. Truman, you got anything to say about that? No, we can move on. <laughs> it's like, I'm not getting involved in this. No. All right. Uh, any other afterthoughts? I, I mean, again, I, I, I thought they were going to lose and then I thought they're going to win. So I will take a four point, uh, two games. It's, it's, it's not the worst fucking thing in the world. And as for last night, you know, yeah, it, it definitely sucks to lose, but, uh, that was the fucking beast of B squad. So at least they got something out of that. Um, again, thanks to Luis Robles for saving, saving their asses. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about the Cincy game and, and that's right. It's, you know, you be, you better be fucking rested as they post on Instagram. Yeah, you better be rested and ready. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna say I, I, I'm I'm kind of at the point. I think it's just gonna be a mediocre season. Uh, um, I, I think they have at least improved from dog shit. Um, you know, so I, I definitely could see a fifth, sixth, seventh place finish. Um, yeah, you know, so that's that's kind of what this last game exemplified. Um. That being said, I don't think you can drop points at home like that, especially against a ninth place team. Um, you're never going to get me happy about that. Um, uh, you know, f- I do agree with your point that I think we we all kind of thought this was going to be a three point swing. Uh, so Fort is better, but again, can't drop points to a team like Vancouver. Yeah, uh, I got nothing else at this point. <laughs> All right, so uh, predictions. None of us got anything right. We are in the shits. What what are, what are the point totals for the season? It's still me and Truman at four, and you at one. <laughs> <laughs> this Awful. is amazing, isn't it? It really is amazing. This is no one no one wants that belt. You might as well send that thing back. Yeah, this is. I feel like this you is bite your be, tongue. Uh, <laughs> you bite your tongue, Truman. We're going to have to come up with like some other tiebreaker at this point because if Truman and I stay tied like this, we're technically co-champs. Mm, arm wrestling. Oh, well, and then we'll cut it in half like the um, like Lake Hole did with the Divas belt. Fuck no, I paid and, for it. And then, we, and then we, can, we can put them together like a super puzzle. No, uh, you, two, you two have to have a match, a, a hardcore match at uh, Forza Lucha. Uh, it can't be hardcore. It can be 24-7. I was going to say. It can't be hardcore. What if it's uh, pool toys like last year? <laughs> That's still not hardcore enough, so... It's still 24-7 at that point. I want to see Jake go off the top rope and just do a total on fucking uh, Jimmy Snooker dive right on Truman. I would destroy myself doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, fan predictions. Honestly, I didn't update it after, since before the Atlanta match. Let me see if anybody... Ah, so some people got the win. And then nobody got uh, Vancouver right. It was all wins or losses. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, if I had to guess, I think, I think Jen's still in the lead because she did get the win. I'm pretty sure she was at the top of this before Atlanta. So, yep, Jen, uh, goddamn Jen is still uh, still in first place with eight points now. 
goddamn chin. <laughs> She's so much better than us. <laughs> She's doubled your and my t- point totals. Yep, yeah. yeah, we are sad. <laughs> All right. Um, and then this, the one for Cincinnati I'm going to put up after we're done recording. That's going to close at 6.30 on Saturday because it's 7.30 kickoff. Speaking of which, uh, Red Bull's traveling to Cincinnati on uh, Saturday, May 25th, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. Uh, MSG will have the coverage. Previous match, Red Bulls won one nothing at home. Cincinnati this year is three eight and two, two two and one at home. Minus twelve goal difference, eleven points, good for dead last in the East. Their last five, loss 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 win loss. And they had a new manager since the Red Bulls played them. I'm pretty sure he got fired after our match. So predictions, Truman, since you and I are tied first, we you, I'll let you go first. What are you going to predict for Saturday? Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict a win. Let's get silly. We got to change things around, all right? So we got to fucking get off these four points. It's a little ridiculous, though. So, uh, let's start moving shit around. You're right. Cincinnati does suck. And Chris Armas better be right by wrestling players and coming out with a, uh, a stronger lineup. Um, I'll say, I, I'm going to say, let's see, 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. Uh, I know, the shock on the road. Um, what does Cincy play on? Do they play in grass on that field? I don't know. Yeah, what that I, I, Nippert's, Nippert's uh, turf. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think the team will like to play it fast. I, Cincy, I don't know. I, it, Something, something's got to give here. Um, I'm going to say that the team is going to take the mentality of feeling good after these past two um, games at home. And uh, fuck it. Come out with a 3-1 win. Why not, right? Why the fuck not? <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to say 2 nothing win. And honestly, if they don't win by multiple goals in this game, I think – at least short term, there's a problem because there's no reason for you not to dominate FC Cincinnati, even if you're on the road. If you have if you have your starters in place, you, you should absolutely beat them. Let okay, I'm gonna put it this way: at least a shutout. All right, if you have all your defense back, you should at least shut this team out. Mm-hmm. All right, Pat, what's your prediction? I am going negative. I'm going one nothing loss. Um, you know, uh, Cincinnati does play a little bit better uh, at home. They actually beat their last home game. They beat Montreal two to one, a team that beat us. Um, you know, so uh, I am. I'm not super positive about this. I think Cincy it'll be an ugly one. I think Cincy will get that win. And uh, if anything, my negativity always seems to bite me in the ass. So. Uh, We'll uh, we'll see if uh, me being wrong will be good for the team, and if not, then maybe I'll gain on the uh, points to uh, the standings. Hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, next New York Red Bulls two. Uh, last week I said they didn't have a match until this weekend. I was wrong apparently. <laughs> I rushed I rushed through it when I was putting the agenda together. Uh, they had a two nothing loss at the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Uh, their current record is six two and two. 20 points plus 10 goal difference, good for third in the East. Now their next match is at home versus North Carolina FC tomorrow, May 24th at 7 p.m. Mm. So if you're uh, in the area on Friday night and you have nothing else to do, you might as well go. Yeah, do it. And I think uh, if you're a Red member, you can get a free ticket to that game using uh, some of your membership points. Hopefully, it's a relatively cheap exchange. Then, I would, I would assume. I, I don't know what the points to thing to ratio is for like anything. So uh, it wasn't a lot, maybe like a thousand points or something, Ooh. which is how which many, is n- not a lot. How yeah. many points do you get I, for going to a game? I think you get like a thousand points just for being a red member. Oh, yeah, you do. You yeah, you do. You literally do. <laughs> All right, uh, Sky Blue FC. <coughs> Jay's dying again. Yeah, his team is killing him. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right. Sky Blue FC lost their last match 2-1 to one at the Seattle Reign. 
Uh, current record is 0-2-4, two, two points, five, or minus five goal difference, eighth in the league. Orlando is ninth, so right now in the standings, Sky Blue is at least a step better than they were last year. Um, next match is at home versus Portland Thorns FC on Saturday, May 25th at 6 p.m. So unfortunately, we'll overlap with the Red Bulls game. Uh, that brings us to the dumping ground. I'm the trash man. All right, so we got a lot to talk about. Mm-hmm. Plenty. More that's listed, because there's another note, too, that was not included in here. Was there? Yes. Ooh. Was it one that I was trying? No, I did it. Well, I don't know what the other one is. All right, uh, so start with uh, Red Bull uh, call-ups. So during this international window that's coming up in June, the following players being called up for participation in the Gold Cup. Uh, Aaron Long will play with the U.S. of A. Boom. Derek Kane Jr. with Haiti. Kamar Lawrence with Jamaica. Uh, Jordan Scarlett, who mostly right now is in Red Bull 2 with Jamaica. And uh, Michael Amir Maria will be playing for Panama. You know, one thing I do kind of find funny about that is how little confidence Kamar Lawrence clearly has in Jamaica. Because uh, the Gold Cup final is when uh, the Red Bulls play Atlanta down in Atlanta. And Jama- and Kamar Lawrence had already said something along the lines of, man, I'm really looking forward to being in Atlanta. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> like, I think he said it right after the last game. So it's like, ooh. He knows where his butter's bread. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Of course, I said that completely backwards, but I think it's funnier that way. Yeah, do it. <laughs> all right. Uh, next and Pat, <coughs> you're our recent U.S. guy. Uh, let's talk about the United States initial roster for the Gold Cup. All right, am I reading this whole thing off or whatever you want to read? All right, 40 men around this roster. Uh, let's uh, go uh, right through it. Uh, number one is alumni Tyler Adams, uh, defender. He's listed as a right back. He played as a right back in uh, his first game with Greg Berhalter. Um, and, but it's kind of like a hybrid role where he does uh, move up into the midfield for the attack. So. That's interesting. Uh, back from exile is Josie Altador at mm. Ford. How do you guys feel about that? Great. Super, super, super duper. Is there a better forward in the pool than Josie Altador? Hmm, Tom Barlow's not there yet, so I, <laughs> I, I, I guess not. Which well, does not well, make me feel good about anything. Since winning this Gold Cup doesn't get us right to Confederations Cup, I say I say fuck it and let's start getting the youth guys going. Nah. All right, uh, I say we need to get back to winning. So fuck it. Uh, Jonathan Amen out of F- FC Nordisland from Denmark. Uh, <laughs> Paul Ariola from DC. Corey Baird from Real Salt Lake. Tyler Boyd. Now this one is interesting. He is from. He is currently playing at. MKE Ankara in Turkey. Now, he is interesting because he just sure. filed a one-time switch uh, from New Zealand to the United States. He is now a United States player. He is a winger, which is a position that the United States has a bit of need at. Um, he's been tearing it up in Turkey this season. Uh, has struggled in the past in the Portuguese league, so it's going to be interesting to see what he can do, but I think he will be on this final roster because I don't think he would have made the switch otherwise. Other man who has not quite been in exiles on, Michael Bradley, uh, Reggie Cannon at SC Dallas, Cameron Carter-Vickers from Tottenham Hotspur, although I don't see him making the final roster. Marlon Fossey out of Fulham, I think that's another let's take a look at him player. Uh, Greg Garza, uh, SC Cincinnati, hard to see him making the roster considering he is hurt. And his career has pretty much been derailed by injuries, unfortunately. Uh, here's someone back from exile that I would rather stay in exile, Omar Gonzalez <laughs> from Club Atlas. Uh, Andrew Gutman, who is the, uh, the case of a number of issues uh, last year. He uh, you know, spurred uh, Chicago to sign with Celtic. Uh, they attempted to loan him back to a, I forget which team, uh, but it was a team that has, I think it was Nashville, Nashville's USL side. And that was a big issue because you, Nashville is moving up to MLS and Chicago still in, you know, MLS's draconian rules has uh, 
Gutman's uh, MLS rights. So even though he is with Celtic at this point. Uh, Brad Guzan is uh, on this 40-man roster. Joe Zhao, who was at one point a up-and-comer, but another one, unfortunately, derailed by injuries. He is from that lost generation uh, that failed to make the World Cup. Dwayne Holmes, who had a quite exciting season at Derby County this year. Um, I don't know where Derby is right now. And as a matter of fact, they might be Derby County because English are weird and pronounce their own language weird. Um, I don't know if he, if they got promoted or if they're in the promotion playoffs uh, or if those are even over yet. I don't follow the championship. So sorry about that. Ethan Horvath uh, had a good season at Club Bruges in Belgium. Uh, he's one of the keepers. Sean Johnson, New York City FC. Look, we hate New York City. Uh, Sean Johnson has two noticeable, notable gaffes in his career, but is otherwise a solid keeper. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Lewis of the Colorado Rapids, another winger. Nick Lima also had a solid January camp from San Jose. Sebastian Legit back. Uh, LA Galaxy player that I personally think, if he had never gotten hurt, U.S. would have been the World Cup uh, last year. Aaron Long, we know that. Daniel Lovitz out of Montreal Impact. Weston McKinney, no need to introduce there. Another Red Bull alum, Matt Miazga. Uh, Jordy Mihaljevic from uh, Chicago Fire, Tyler Miller from Chicago uh, from LAFC, Jordan Morris back from injury. Exciting to see him back on the field. Seattle Sounders, Darlington Nagby, Atlanta, Christian Pulisic now of Chelsea, Christian Ramirez at LAFC, Tim Ream another Red Bull alum, Fulham, Anthony Robinson Wigan Athletic, but also actually of Everton. Uh, Miles Robinson Atlanta United, Christian Roldan Seattle Sounders, Josh Sargent. Uh, Came out hot for Werder Bremen this year. Uh, started playing in January uh, or after the winter break, so I guess February. Uh, kind of fell off as the season went on, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, he's not in with the U-20s. He's with the U.S., so we'll see what happens. Zach Steffen, probably your starting keeper at a club's crew. Will Trapp, also crew. Giassi's artist, also crew. Uh, and finally, Walker Zimmerman of LAFC. You know, if only there was a keeper that was really good – in MLS, <laughs> that should fucking almost definitely get a look. Hmm. I probably can't think of any though. Hey. I mean, like a guy who would make like a save at the very end of a game uh, to preserve a uh, two-two draw. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 an age thing. That's all it is with him. It's kind of actually a miracle that uh, Tyler Miller. Actually, no, he's young. Uh, actually, no, none of the other than Brad Guzan, none of the keepers particularly old. Um, but like, there's some guys like. Uh, Melia out in, uh, I believe he's with Sporting Kansas City. He's been tremendous, but he's in his 30s. Same with um, guy of Seattle, Stephen Fry. Um, that's really what it comes down to with Luis. Sure, but we're going to have Josie Altador out there as our forward. He's only 30. He's only 30, and he's still probably the best forward in the pool. Yeah, keepers play forever. <laughs> I think I think Miola could still get out there. Yeah. But, I mean, I think right now you, your starting keeper is Zach Steffen. He's 24 years old. Um, you know, it, it's it, – I'd like to see Luis get some caps, but it is what it is. Who knows? Maybe much like that, uh, the guy in 2010 who's a third keeper. I can't even remember his name. But, you know, never really got capped much, but was there when he was like 37, 38. Maybe that'll be a Luis at some point. Cool. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else. Uh, player retirements. There was a few that announced this week. Yeah, a crazy amount. Yeah. Uh, Chad Marshall, last of lastly with Seattle. Uh, Sal Zizo, former Red Bull. Mm-hmm. And maybe the big one or biggest one is uh, Demarcus Beasley. Yep. For, former U.S. Uh, national player. I'm pretty sure he started playing in 1996. I am fairly sure. Mm-hmm. Fairly sure that was his first year. Yep, I mean, that'd be a crazy career. <laughs> Maybe it just feels that way, but I don't know. I, I think you're actually you're wrong. I think he started. He was on the 1950 World Cup team. Oh, that, okay. That beat yeah. England. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's an even crazier career. Mm-hmm. Uh, any thoughts on the retirements? Uh, Demarcus Beasley, you know the guy we thought probably retired like 15 times already. Yeah. And then came but, back I mean, Houston. Yeah, good for him. And Sal Zizo, we've been missed. He was always a good guy. Yeah. He wasn't dynamic with this team. He didn't have some illustrious career, but you know, good dude. Yeah, DeMarcus Beasley, I mean, you, you gotta give the guy you gotta give the guy credit. I mean, he was 
you know, if you remember that 2009 Confederations Cup, he had an awful tournament and just was in the doghouse forever. And then he came back five years later to play a position that was not his position, left back in the 2014 World Cup. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the qualifiers leading up to that. And he did, he performed admirably. So, I mean, you know, the guy went in the doghouse and he worked his way back. You got to, you got to give a guy like that credit. All right. Uh, last thing I have right now is MLS uh, salary comparison uh, on Twitter at MLS underscore buzz uh, decided to do kind of a random sampling. So he took uh, middle, I think it was middle of the standings. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. Um, middle of the standings are still from last year. So took the 2018 salary numbers. Compared them to the middle teams in three top European leagues, uh, Germany, Italy, and uh, France. And this is what he found. So RSL total player salaries in 2018 were $8.975 million. Uh, Fortuna, or, yeah, Fortuna in Germany, $8.764. Uh, SPAL, I'm not sure actually who that is, in Italy, $12.608 million. And uh, Nantes in France, $12.138 million. So out of the... Th- Three or out of the four, they they were number three in total salary. Hmm. Uh, I think the the big thing though was in terms of salary distribution, where the MLS really wasn't paying many players. It, it was lopsided, right? Yeah, more it was more players either in the DP scale or at the lower end. We we're talking like uh, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar a year salaries. <clears throat> the other teams had a lot more players in the like 400, 450 area mm-hmm. where that's not really feasible in MLS because of, of where the salary cap is right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it, we're a top heavy league. Uh, there's a lot of guys who are making a lot. And then there's another, a lot of guys who are just merely making living wages. Um, it, it's, but it is interesting. It is nonetheless interesting. Um, I mean, I certainly could see LAFC taking on a lot of mid card teams uh, in Europe. Uh, you know, but at the same time, and we got to win the Concacaf Champions League to really uh, toot our own horn. Who cares what we're spending on rosters? Yeah. Also, what it shows to me is that uh, we could create one really cool middling super league. Let's do it. The B League. Yeah, B League, B League, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there was one other thing you said that, that I missed for the yeah. Round. Yeah, World Cup news that uh, the oh, yes. our World Cup will not be 48 teams. It will be 32, which means to me is that 16 teams will not have to go to a country that used slave labor, killed people to build stadiums. So yeah. good for those 16 teams that will not be qualifying for this yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, I'm so annoyed by this next World Cup. Just because I'm going to be – just because, like, we had to miss the one before this World Cup. Yeah, why could it have been this one? Because now we're going to be so fucking World Cup starved that it's like, well, I got to watch the slavery World Cup. Great. Or go to it, which just makes me really sick to my stomach. Definitely not doing that. In, in December. Well, I work, so. No, that's yeah. just, that's just, in the winter. It's not in the summer anymore. Yeah, I know. That's the school year, so I definitely can't go. <laughs> Welcome to my world. I work yeah. year-round. <laughs> no, I don't know. Shame to, shame to everybody who uh, considers going to this one. Sorry. Sorry, people, listeners that want to go to this. Uh, you suck. Mm. I, don't know. Choice. I just think you I, said. I, I hope for the sake of the World Cup that this decision to not increase it somehow finds its way to the rest of the World Cups beyond. I know it's not going to happen, but I really hope this stays at 32 teams. Well, it's going to be 48 for us. It's, it, it's got to be because we have three host nations. Yeah, three hosts. It's just yeah. impossible to not have 48 for the 2026. 20, yeah, you can't take three spots out and expect that things to yeah. go well. Uh, and then. Because this just reminded me, did you guys hear about what's going on with the Women's World Cup final? No. It's not. So uh, the local organizers, I guess the last batch of tickets for the final, mm-hmm. um, if people were getting pairs of tickets that were not seated together, and we're talking a good amount of ticket buyers, 
so much so that FIFA had to put out a statement saying that they're working with the local organizers to figure out what's going on. Hmm. It seems what happened was a bunch of tickets were sold originally, which left single seats by themselves. So when mm-hmm. people were buying two seats, they were going to automatically split up because mm-hmm. somebody didn't think ahead to rearrange people if they needed to. That's what you're saying. And of course, people are now, you know, we're maybe like a month and a half away from that that particular match. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to do? I'm not. How am I supposed to sell two tickets that aren't even next to each other? If I, let alone if I want to go, be able to sit next to the person I'm going with. You could have to make new friends. Yeah, exactly. Make friends with strangers. You're all there for one reason. True. I mean, hey, you're at a World Cup final. Yeah. You know, just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. No, uh, I don't. I, I get the frustration, though. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm lucky that the guys I sit with, the people that have the season six next to them, seem to never show up. And I get to sit with them, but hey, if those people show up, I sit by myself a few hours back. Not the end of the world. That's a little hard to do at the World Cup final. But, but you're at a world. I would actually be more okay uh, sitting by myself at a World Cup final than I would like at a Red Bull game because I'm at a fucking World Cup final. Right, yeah. you're so zoned in onto the event that you're at. Like it'd yeah. be like being at the Super Bowl. Who gives a shit? Well, I'm, you know, you're there. When Landon Donovan scored that goal in 2010. I hugged the guy at a Hoboken bar that I did not know. <laughs> Trust me. It, it's fine. I hugged the guy at a Red Bulls game during against San Jose that I didn't know. So they... Wow, you're way more into soccer than me. I don't hug strangers for San Jose. <laughs> well, he was he was more about hugging me than I was hugging him. But I was like, eh, whatever. You accepted he, such he, a he, hug. He gave, you, he gave you a nice massage. And he's like, hey, don't you love the soccer? While he like, <laughs> reached around and he started stroking your uh, My back. Your, 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 man, your back and your man. Your man pecs. His, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, we went to that Gold Cup game like eight years ago now, I think it was. The one, yeah, the one that was 2011. In, yeah. In DC. And, um, I, I stayed for the first half of the game afterwards, which I think El Salvador was like the, had all the fan support there. Yeah. Um, the guys in front of me at, if, I'm glad we weren't playing them because they probably wouldn't have been as cool. But the guys in front of me were really cool. They they kept looking back at me whenever El Salvador scored. They're like trying to get me to cheer with them, and I'm like, I don't want to say some of these because I know, I, I not that I know like Spanish, but like I know there's curses in here, mm-hmm. and I don't feel comfortable saying this as the one white guy in this in this sea of people right here. Mm. But speaking of, <laughs> speaking of curses, I learned some curses in Hindi yesterday. <laughs> Nice. My friend, my friend is from my friend is from India that I was hanging out with, and uh, they were telling me that hello, like, ch- uh, hold on, let's see, chutia, chutia. He said, "Oh, that's hello in Hindi." I'm like, "Really?" So I should go back to my school district and say chutia to people, and they started laughing. I'm like, "Okay, what does it really mean?" <laughs> this is a trap. Yeah, <laughs> this is a trap. Yeah, it means uh, fuckers. So, like, when I. I hung out with those guys at the end of the game. I just went, I looked at uh, the Red Bull Arena and went, Chutia! And they were like, yep. <laughs> That's an appropriate use of the word. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, <clears throat> unless there's anything else, the last topic of the night is, of course, Truman's Terrible Team of the Week. That's terrible. So, we should beat Cincinnati because they are my terrible team of the week. Uh, because they gave up four second half goals to super duper powerhouse Orlando. Uh, two of those goals by Nani. Uh, yes, it was on the road, but five one kind of sucks. But let me say this. Now that's, that's terrible team of the week, Cincinnati. But let's celebrate the anniversary. I think it was on mm. Tuesday of the all time. Terrible team of the week, and that will always be NYC FC for losing to us seven zero. Boom! I believe that I believe that anniversary was on Tuesday. It was Tuesday because it, it was all over Twitter. Yep. So there you go. Special uh, three year anniversary. Four, three, three, mm. three year anniversary. Um, we beat them in year two of their existence. Yes. That- because year one was just like a 2-1 win or something like that. Yeah. So drink it in. Uh, I can watch those highlights over and over again, which I have, which I watched them again several times on Tuesday. 
uh, cause they're now permanently saved to my phone. Um, Gideon Boss scored a goal in that game. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, Verone scored his second goal. Uh, as MLS or his Red Bull career in did that Alex game. Alex Mobile scored his first MLS goal. Not a- Alex Mobile scored his first goal. Dax McCarty had two, two off headers. Two, right? he- yeah, two headers off of corners. I think they were both corners. Yeah. <laughs> uh, BWP with that that bicycle, the header, and then the bicycle kick. Uh, what a, what a great day that was! What a great game. Do we have Chris Armis's soundbite again about appreciating the past? <laughs> I don't have it to that level. Well, I would appreciate. I will always appreciate that past. You know what? This gives me reason to use this clip because it hasn't been used for a few weeks. New York City FC. That game. It's fucking embarrassing. (laughs) Not for us, though. No, that was for New York City. For us, it was delightful. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we wrap up the show? No, sir. U twenty World Cup's going on, so. Check oh. it out. Oh, cool. Hey, this one's on the watch. Yep. All right. Uh, Patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. One buck a month is all you need to uh, help us support the show and to get exclusive content, such as our monthly wrap ups and live post games if we ever decide to do one. Email us, Red Bull Rant at gmail.com. You can call us, 973 <clears throat> Facebook.com slash Red Bull Rant on Twitter at Red Bull Rant for the show at Doc the Stooge for myself at PMAC DA2 for Pat at The Truman for Truman. Subscribe to our show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, um, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. Hey, Red Bulls, let's go double or nothing on Saturday night. Oh. And produce a big old win. Ooh, reference. (laughs) All right, so for Pat Truman and myself, this has been episode number 310 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, go Red Bulls. Wrestling. Yeah, that.